at home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to start off with a couple here. Uh, somebody mentioned this one that was talking about this song, and I hadn't done it in a long time, so I'm going to do it. Well, the stairs sound so lonely without you. I ain't made my bed in a week. There's coffee stains on the paper I'm writing. And I'm too choked up inside to speak. us apart. We never spoke a word heart to heart. And I'm glad that you're gone. And I wish to the Lord you'd come home. that I'm going to do, and I'm going to see how many of them I'm going to do. Hmm. All right. 
This is a song by Ray Burrow. I'm sure there's a lot of people here that are familiar with Ray. He played around San Diego for quite a while. And uh, now he's living in San Francisco and playing a bluegrass band around there. But uh, I heard him do it first at the Heritage in Mission Beach. And he never would sing the words, he'd just play the melody. And uh, the melody's all right by itself, but he wrote all these words here too. So I'll try to do it justice. Coffee's gotten so cold on the stove, and the morning is just about gone. I'm getting out of bed to find the paper's been read, cause my lady's been up since the dawn. And I stumble good morning and she answers good day. Out the door and she's on her way Leaving me searching for a reason Why I was born And it looks like Friday's blues Have made it into Saturday morning Treasure Island with Orson Welles, and they filmed it in Spain, and it was terribly unauthentic. But uh, 
the soundtrack was pretty good. And uh, so I thought I'd see if I could write one too. So I came home and wrote this. about the Greyhound bus depot. I came in on the Greyhound and uh, I don't know, it's funny. Most of the songs about depots and everything are about like, like that's where you go uh, when, you're, when you're gonna go somewhere. But I mean, there's hundreds of people that just go down there to hang out. <laughs> so this is for them. <laughs> You know, you pack a bag and you go down and sit in one of those TV chairs. <laughs> so this is about the hangar outers at the depot. It's like, usually if you are going somewhere though, it's like uh, every now and then you get in line next to a pretty girl, but you want to kind of sit 
next one of the bus, you know. But uh, I, I always end up with a wino or somebody. You know? <laughs> so it's a lot of competition to see who's going to get to sit next to the girl. It always is for me. So this is a little thing about uh, the depot here in San Diego, which has just gone under uh, extensive renovation, if you notice. <laughs> And uh, I used to be just about the funkiest spot in town before that. And now, now it's just like the airport, you know. I mean, if you're if you're ragged, you stand out. Before, you could just go there and bland. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, called Depot. <laughs> about marriage, American style. It's like uh, most people I know married, and uh, I'm not, so uh, this is a little reinforcement number for all the bachelors in the audience. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> and there's always Tijuana. <laughs> no, that's not true. I haven't been down there in 
over a year, actually. Uh -huh. All my friends are married, every Tom and Dick and Harry. You must be strong if you're to go it alone. It's to the bachelors and the Bowery bombs and those who feel that they're the ones better off without a word. For a trumpet player, but it didn't get me down. He wanted for a salt and always said it weren't his fault. You know the coppers rode him right out of town. I like to sleep until the crack of noon at midnight. At the moon, I go out when I want. Should I come on when I please? Don't have to ask permission. If I want to go out fishing.
I guess it was not long ago there was a songwriting contest for San Diego songs, right? Anybody else hear about that? Yeah. And uh, I heard about it from Jack Tempshire, and uh, then we saw a little bit on TV. They were doing an ad for the record. And uh, I, mean, I mean, songs like that. Uh, I'm from El Cajon and I'm tough. And <laughs> country Western. I didn't. I didn't hear about the uh, contest until I was after it was over, and they already pressed the records and everything. And uh, but I got a little something called San Diego Serenade, and uh, I'd like to do it. And it's uh, it's pretty good. It's uh. It's kind of like you never miss the water till the well runs dry is what I was kind of trying to do in it. Now, I guess a lot of times you write a song and try to visualize somebody else singing it. Uh, I figure Ray Charles is, was my pick. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is called San Diego Serenade. <laughs>
ride this little cocktail lounge approach to a truck driver. <laughs> syndicated on K-Day up in Los Angeles and uh, has lost a lot of his pizzazz. Uh, you call him up and, uh, I mean, I got the hotline number. You can still call him up, uh, but he, he just seems to have lost a little bit of his fire. You know what I mean? It's like, K-Day, and that's it. You know? <laughs> and then he lets you talk for a while, and then, you know, he says, I got to go. Bye. But I remember calling him before. And uh, sometimes he talked for like 10, 15 minutes, you know, if he like put on a tape and spin it and have the whole program happening while he talked to you on the radio. And he used to get long distance calls from Oklahoma City and would just get in a big uh, to do with the operator over it. He'd never accept him. And you hear the other guy on the other end going, I want to talk to Wolf, man. <laughs> and the operator said, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jack. Mr. Jack, we can't uh, have you talking over the operator's voice and all this whole thing. 
But uh, I remember one particular incident that happened that I don't know, as far as I know, I'm the only one that heard this. But uh, <laughs> but it was, uh, I guess it was probably about two in the morning and I used to, uh, I don't know, I, it's funny, like I used to listen to his show like the way you tune in a, a TV program, you know, you want to be there on time, you know, and you get everything happen, but you know, usually when you turn on the radio, you just say, well, you just flick on the radio, you know, whatever's happened. But Wolfman, you always made it on time. He was 12 to 2, and uh, if somebody wasn't there, he'd do a marathon show now and then. So, uh, as this guy called up, this is in town, so he took the call, and uh, he called up and said, uh, he said, Wolfman, my woman left me. What am I going to do? And, uh, well, he says, don't worry about it. What's your name, boy? He says, uh, Jimmy, and my name's Jimmy, and Shirley just left me, and so, he says, don't worry about a thing, Jimmy, we'll get Shirley back for you, I promise you. <laughs> so he sends out a plea over the air, that's 50,000 50, watts of soul power, I mean, I swear, I picked him up in Oklahoma City when I was driving through there, it's real faint, though, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but so he sends out his pleas and shirley wherever you are <laughs> jimmy loves you and he wants you back and he's never gonna do it again <laughs> real sweet you know and so wherever she was she heard him on the radio and she called up and she goes uh she goes i want to speak to jimmy and she goes shirley jimmy and this whole thing went back and forth <laughs> And all the time, old man going, all right, <laughs> And I've told people about that. Nobody seems to have ever heard that. But it did happen. He brought two lonely hearts back together again, right on the air. So never underestimate the power of radio. But, uh, I mean, he used to offer helpful little hints, too, and a lot of real important information over the air. He used it kind of as an educational service as well as entertainment. And would uh, uh, I mean that's how I found about found out about how you tell the sex of a chromosome. I mean, where else would you learn that but on the Wolfman? <laughs> you know how to tell the sex of a chromosome? Oh man, you blew my joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll do this thing.
Jimmy. Mr. Bob Webb, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna hold Jimmy and get him. Are you sure you want to play this one? No, I just go back and get this. All right. Well, times got hard and I got down on my luck. And I got tired of just roaming and bumming around. So I started thumbing back to my old hometown. I made quite a few miles in the first couple of days, and so I figured I'd be home in a week if my luck held out this way. I got stranded. There was a cold, lonely crossroads and the rain was pouring down. And I was hungry, tired, and freezing. In fact, I done caught a chill when the lights of an old semi atop the hill. Boy, you should have seen me smile when I heard them air brakes come on. I climbed up into that cab where I knew it. The wheel said a big man must have weighed 210. Stuck out a big hand, said with a grin, Big Joe's name. Said a race called Phantom 309. Well, I said, why I call this rig such a name? He said, my son, this here rig would put them all to shame. Cause there ain't a driver on this or any other line for that matter that's seen nothing but the tail lights of Big Joe and the Phantom 309. We rode and talked, the better part of the night. So the lights of a truck stop rolled in sight. He said, I'm sorry, son, but this is just as far as you go. You see, I gotta be making a turn just up the road. He tossed me a dime as he threw her in low. He said, have a hot cup of coffee on Big Joe. Joe and his rig pulled off into the night. Nothing flat, it was clean out of sight. I walked into the old stop, ordered me up a cup of mud, saying, Big Joe set this dude up. But it got so deathly quiet in that place, you could have heard a pen drop. The waiter's face turned kind of pale, and I, I said, well, what's the matter? Did I say something wrong? I, I said with a halfway grin, he said, No, son, it'll happen every now and then. See, every driver in here knows Big Joe. But let me tell you what happened just ten years ago. Out there at that cold, lonely crossroads, they flagged Joe down, there's a whole busload of kids just coming from school. Well, they were right in the middle when Joe topped the hill and could have been slaughtered, except Joe turned his wheels, jackknife, went into a skid. Gave his life to save that bunch of kids. So out there at that cold, lonely crossroads was the end of the line for Big Joe and Fam 309. But every now and then, it's like you, some could be coming by and Joe stop and give me a ride. So here, must be cold. Have yourself another cup of coffee on the house. I want you to keep that dime. Keep it as a souvenir. Big Joe. Bob and I are driving around on Alvarado Street, 
one afternoon, remember? And uh, that's when I had this 58 Super. <laughs> and uh, real low to the ground. It was kind of, uh, well, the color was kind of a uh, monkey shit brown, I guess you call it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, looked like a jukebox, had all the chrome. And I bought it for $100 on a, at a 76 station just down the street. I was driving by with my dad, I said, stop! <laughs> and I went and bought the car and lived to regret it. But Well, this song kind of came out of driving around in that car, I guess. Uh, uh, we were driving around on Saturday afternoon, no, Sunday afternoon. But we were thinking about Saturday night at the time. And how you never really know what you're looking for when you're out looking for it. Until it just comes up behind you and knocks you over the head. This is called Looking for the Heart of Saturday Night. Dedicated to all Saturday Night hopefuls. Well, you've gassed her up behind the wheel your arm around your sweet one, your old mobile barreling down the boulevard, looking for the heart of Saturday night. You got paid on Friday night, your pockets are jingling, and you see the lights get all tingling, cause you're cruising with a six, looking for the heart of on the green, cause tonight will be like nothing you've ever seen as you're barreling down the boulevard, looking for the heart of Saturday night, tell me is it the crack of the pool balls or the neon buzzing, telephones ringing and it's your second cousin, is it the vomit smiling from the corner of her eye? Magic of the melancholy tear in your eye that makes it kind of quiver. Down in the core, you're dreaming of them Saturdays that came before that find you stumbling. You're stumbling on the heart of Saturday night.
down in the core. You're dreaming of them Saturdays that came before that find you stumbling, stumbling on the heart of Saturday night. And you're stumbling, stumbling on the heart of Saturday night. Thank you. I guess I'm going to start with a uh, song, a car song here. Not a whole lot of them around now. There's a big fever of uh, until her daddy takes her T-bird away. And uh, GTO, 409, all them. This is kind of a little uh, song about an old Buick. Anybody out there a Buick owner? <laughs> I say Buick owners is this bond between Buick owners. You know, like you're on the highway or something, you know you got a Buick, and you know you got a Buick. It's just kind of a no. Nah. <laughs> so just kind of understood that uh, uh, you're riding on air. So this is about an old Buick.
Thank you. This is a song about uh, Virginia Avenue in Reno, Nevada. I went there to visit my cousin. Uh, this is pretty close to Virginia Street. That's what it actually is. I just changed the street to Avenue because it works better. And uh, well, he lives in Reno. He's been there for a long time. Because after a while, you just take all the gambling and all for granted. I mean, you get up in the morning, you go down to Sambo's and get your breakfast, play a little Keno, see if you can win your bacon and eggs, you know. And uh, But there's kind of a tradition down there with uh, divorce and what they'd usually do is throw their rings in the Truckee River, which runs right underneath the Virginia Street, right? And uh, so my cousin got divorced. He spent like uh, $2,500 on a wedding ring. I said, what'd you do with your wedding ring? And uh, <laughs> he said, uh, well, I just chucked it in the Truckee. And uh, so while I was down there with my uh, cutoff song, Searching the, <laughs> searching the floor of the Truckee River for old wedding bands, I this popped in my head immediately.
your death of cold Walking in the I'd like to do a kind of an acapella number that originally was uh, had accompaniment, but I've just been trying to work it over a number of different ways. But it's kind of inspired by a, uh, a late night drive from San Diego back to Los Angeles with broken windshield wipers and uh, a lot of other things wrong too, but that was the main thing. So I stopped at a filling station and I took an oily rag and wiped it on the windshield and shit, the water rolled over just like a duck's back. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd make a real scientific breakthrough there. You might try that if you ever run into that problem. I've never had a car with windshield wipers at work, so it's always come in handy for me. But when you got that happening, you could see the drops coming down. It doesn't obscure your vision at all. And. Uh, so I got this thing called Diamonds on the Windshield I'll do for you right now. Diamonds on my windshield. Tears from heaven. Pulling into town on the interstate. Pulling a steel train in the rain. And the wind bites my cheek to the wing. It's these late nights and this freeway flying that always makes me sing. Cause there's a duster trying to change my tune. He's pulling up fast on the right and rolling restlessly by a 24-hour moon. And a Wisconsin hiker with a cue ball head just wishing he's home in a Wisconsin bed with 15 feet of snow in the east. Shit, it's colder than a well digger's ass. But Oceanside, it ends the ride with San Clemente coming up. Sunday desperados slip by and cruise with the drive back. And the orange driving, neon billing, Theaters filling to the brim with slave girls, hot spur, and bucket full of sin. With the metropolitan area and interchanging connections and fly-by-nights from Riverside and out-of-state plates running a little late. The Mercedes jockeying for the fast lane, 101 don't miss it. 
rolling hills of concrete fields and the broken line on your mind. And the eights go east and the fives go north and the merging exits back and forth. You see your sign, you cross the line, you signal with a blink. And the radio's gone off the air and gives you time to think. <laughs> you hear the rumble as you fumble for a cigarette and blazing through this midnight jungle, remember someone that you met. And one more block, the engine talks and whispers, home at last. This has only got, this one's got one verse. I first heard Pam Oscar sing it. Uh, around the heritage, and a lot of people started singing it. It's just real simple when it goes like Some woman told me today Wasting your life away Sitting around in your prime Getting drunk on a bottle of wine I can sleep late in the morning I don't like to wear no shoes Making love to women while I'm living Get drunk on a bottle Some woman told me today Some woman told me today Wasting your 
there's a story to it here. It's kind of, uh, it's about a guy that goes into uh, one of these 24-hour restaurants and where they give you the refill on the coffee so you can sit for shits for five hours. <laughs> and uh, so he walks in there and he's checking out the waitress, Bernice with a tag on her thing. And uh, so he just checks her out all night. Plots and schemes of how he's going to get from the booth to get her into his Plymouth. And finally just chucks the whole thing and goes back and just uses his imagination. You can buy the imagination just about anywhere now.
There was a guy I was talking to uh, not long ago. It was on a United flight to London, and uh, just so happened that all the all the engines had gone out, and uh, so the captain came over the intercom, you see, and says, uh, oh, a small announcement to uh, make, and I'd like all our passengers who can swim to please cross the left-hand side of the airplane. So all the people who can swim cross the left-hand side of the airplane. So. Now to all those who, uh, who cannot swim, will you please cross the right-hand side of the airplane? So I, people who couldn't swim cross the right-hand side of the airplane. He said, I have a few announcements I'd like to make to those of you on the left who can swim. There's a small island not far from where we'll be crashing in the Atlantic. <laughs> it's maybe half a mile, you know, three quarters of a mile away, and you'll have absolutely no trouble at all swimming to the island. And in the next couple of days, you'll be reunited with your friends and family, and you'll just forget this whole bad dream. Now, to those passengers on the right who cannot swim, I'd like to say that uh, Thank you for going United. We hope you had a pleasant flight. And, uh, there was another, uh, the same guy told me about a, uh, he does a lot of flying. There was another, uh, him and two other guys were on a uh, TSA flight one night. And they were sitting in uh, tourist. Well, uh, again, the captain came on the intercom and said, uh, I regret to inform you that uh, the first of our four engines has just gone out and will be delayed about, oh, I'd say 15 to 20 minutes, no problem at all. They kind of shrugged it off, no big thing. Well, the captain came back on the intercom about 10, 15 minutes later and says, I regret to inform you that the second of our four engines has gone out and uh, will be delayed about, oh, I'd say an hour and 15 minutes coming in. Oh, they shrugged it off. I mean, hell, we got two left, right? So, uh, well, the captain came back on in another 10 minutes. He said, I regret to inform you, the third of our four engines has just gone out. And we'll be delayed about two and a half hours coming in. One turned the other to the ship. That fourth one goes out, we'll be up here all night. <laughs> <clears throat> That's all the airplane stories I got. Uh, but I used to know a guy that worked in a sawmill. I'm gonna bunch these all together. This guy worked in a sawmill for a number of years, and uh, he was pretty good at it, big, strong guy, and uh, he'd been working there for about 20 years, so he had everything under control, no problem at all. Well, one day, he just wasn't looking where he was going, and for Christ's sake, he cut off his arm. But he was a big guy, like I said, so he just picked it up. Walked across the street to an MD, threw it down on the receptionist's table and said, I'd like it sewed on. What do you give me for a price? <laughs> so uh, she consulted with the doctor. He says, well, I mean, this is quite, this is extensive work. This is, it's a little more than oral surgery, so I'm going to have to charge you about $2,000. He said, my shit, prices are going up. So he grabbed his arm. He cut across town, the RTD, and went to another doctor's office. Threw it down on reception's table. Says I like an appraisal on. Uh, <laughs> says how much you put it on? He says well, fifteen hundred is you know about all I can do for you. And uh, he said for Christ's sake, prices are going up. And he picks up his arm and he goes all the way across town and uh, walks into a small doctor's office that has his name painted on the front with watercolor. You know? He walks in and uh, throws it down the desk. And says doc. I got an offer for 2000 I got an offer for 1500 I mean, I can't make the payments. What do you give me to put the arm back on? He says, go for you. It's $200, man. $200. Cash, of course, but $200. He says, man, you're on. So he laid down, took off his shirt, put his stub out there. The doctor <laughs> sewed it up. And as God is my witness, in two weeks he was back on the job, sawing logs again. And uh, he just got off work early, and he was walking down the... Avenue, and he happened to bump into the doctor one of the two thousand dollars. See, he says, "You come here, you and your two thousand dollars shit. I got this thing put off for two hundred dollars, and here's to you and your two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Play and get the puck out of here. All right. Or you make like a tree and leave. Or make like a baker truck and haul buns. Anybody got any more of them? Make like a what? Yeah, make like a van split. Maybe, uh, Bob, if you're there, we could do the, uh,
hung up on pimentos Had me a girl from L.A. spot there, I don't know. Tijuana. Uh, Tijuana, we'll just call it yeah. Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Like a 
In my mind, things keep changing. But outside, it just keeps raining. The lonesome night could be so cruel. This reminds me of the time drinking, drinking red mountain wine. In the back of a Volkswagen bus And I wound up in jail With no one to go my bail But at least I knew where I was